Hello and welcome. In this video, I will clean up the checkout page and I will show you how you can change object to array, array to object, string to JSON, and how you can parse them. So you will learn a lot in this video. If you think you are good about changing and manipulating data object to array, array to object, you can skip this video. But I recommend you not doing because there are a lot to learn. To be honest, I have stopped recording other video because of this one because it is important and if I do not explain it well, it will be confusing in future for you. I spend a lot of time uh, changing object to array, array to object, which is a lot confusing in JavaScript. Also, there is a new UI to Visual Studio Code. At the time, time of this recording, I really like the icons here and it is really nice. So let's just start coding. And here, this is the checkout page. If someone visit this page, it will create a session code for us. If I refresh this one, it should work just fine. It send a request to our server and it will say check a uh, Stripe checkout for us. So that is not what I want. What I want is if someone click on the checkout, then it should create the checkout page for me. As you can see, this will come out of the Stripe from the server and this is the session we want. And out of this one, we can create our Stripe checkout page. This is not what I want. So what I want is this code should run if someone click on the pay button here. So this is exactly what I want. So for now, I will pay, put this code here and I will comment out this one. I will use it in the future. So I will save it for now. Coming to the code here, clean up everything, click on the checkout. It should bring us the code now. As you can see, it works just fine. Now, out of this product, I have to send the product ID and the product quantity to the server. I will not send the title, the price. I don't need this one. I need. I will grab them from the database because the user might change the price. But the quantity, they can change it, but I can sell them only one. They can change the product ID. I can send other, other product to them. So that is what we want. So let's prepare the data before we send it. How I want the data to be sent to the server? As I said, my data will look something like this. An object, the ID, as well as the quantity, something like that. And the other product will be the same thing, ID and quantity. I have to have the data like that. Then I can send it to the server. So let's prepare my data. How am I going to do this one? I already have them and these are stored in Vuex. If I come to Vuex and here is my object. I will click on this again. I have two objects here. I will loop through both of them and I will grab the ID and the quantity. How you can do this one? You can come here. Let's create a variable result. No, not result, let's say this is going to be data. And it is going to equal to this dot dollar sign store is oops store dot state dot card. You might think what is this? This is how you can access your card information with Vuex. If you don't know if you if you are not following previous videos, this is how you can use the Vuex and Vue.js to access your card information. Now you can map it. Map is like footage. You can map it and assign it to an item and the item can call a function for you. Now the rest of the story, I will just paste a snippet here. I'll paste this snippet and what this is going to do is the map is going to map for every object you have in your cart and it will create an item for you. The item will contain all your information on each product. For example, product ID as well as the product quantity. This is clear how this is going to work. It will create an object. The first one, is, which is the key of the object, it is going to be the ID of the product. And the second one is the quantity. And you know where are those keys. I will open this product as an example. And here is the ID as well as the quantity, which is two. And it will assign it to the data for us. Now let's just console.log the data. Console.log data and see how it works. Is this similar to what we have here or not? I will come here and this time coming to the console. It will not run unless we click the checkout. I click on the checkout. This is what we have, but this is not quite what we want because this is an, an array here. You can see the proto, which is an array. I need the object, as I said in the beginning of the video. It should be similar to this one. This is all I need. So how you can do it like that? For now, this is an array, so that should be an object. If you want to change array to object, you will use the assign. So here is how it is going to work. You can say data, which is the same variable as the above. I will store the, I will grab it as data. 
change it to a uh, object and assign it back to itself so you can say object dot assign here and the assign is going to accept two parameters the first first parameter is going to be an object and the second parameter you can use the spirit operator uh, the spirit uh, operator or something like that you can say three dots here and then the data how this is going to work it's going to grab all of those item in the data you have what are those items here the first one the second one and it will create one object for you so let's see how it works and I have written this one here again I will console.log the data I save it here I will come to my code and I will click on the checkout again as you can see this is the data we want the product ID and the quantity right that was easy and if you are still confused I just use the assign object dot assign and if you want to check the type of it you can use type of data and it should show that this is an object I'll come here click on the checkout and this will show me that, that this is going to be an object so I'll clean up everything for now and now I have my data right everything is prepared I hope you have learned how you can uh, convert this stuff here now I will send it to the server here you know it will send to my checkout file here if I scroll up here for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this code here but I will not save it and I'm coming here when you send a post request with Axios it is really hard in Firebase cloud function to grab those data you have to install some other libraries in your server I'm not going to do this one instead I will send a guest request it is easy to get the data from the guest request if you come to the Axios here is an example of how you can send data with a get request you can see Axios get to this URL and the parameter is going to be ID with the value of something so it should be a param and it is an object so I will come here I show the documentation so later you can use it yourself you can say params and this is going to be an object so okay the object is going to be products this is going to be the key and the value is going to be data what is the data the data is going to be all of my object which is similar to this one makes sense you don't put a semicolon here maybe you put a comma but I don't put that so I will save it for now and you know this will be sent to the server and if I come to my server it should respond one thing you should know about cloud function there is a lot of things that you have to improve like if your function is not responding anything it will just keep running and at this certain amount of time and then it will time out and it will cost you something I will talk about cost of the Firebase in the future videos but for now I will just respond dot send send some data for us so how you can get the data from the get request you have here I'll come here you know we send a get request with this data and how you can get this in information we have already discussed this one in the and the uh, not future and the past videos but this is how you can do this one I will define a variable called uh, my product products equal to you can use the request dot query dot products products is going to be the name of the parameter what is the name of the parameter here the product and it will contain your data here so if I come here it should contain my data here now I will send back my data and let's see what our data will look like once we send it to the server and it will just give me back my data and let's check out here it is not going to console the log anything except our data so I will come to my code here I'll clean up everything these are the warnings click on the checkout you should wait a few seconds it is sending the data to the server and it is going to return an observer here and as you can see the proto is going to be an object now this is an object to the server that's fine so in the server you do need an object you need an array so that's fine we receive an object because we send an object how you can change uh, how you can like um, revert it back to an array so here is how you can do you can say again the same example you can say my product equal to object dot 
entities. Entities is going to uh, be the opposite of the assign. It is not opposite to assign, but this is going to convert your object to array. So if I save it for now, and you have you you convert it and you store it again back to this one. This time, if I come to my code, you click on the checkout. Wow, you have a lot of arrays here. Why this is going to happen? And uh, the reason it happens, it is going to read your object and for each one of those, the zero, the colon, every single part of it, as you can see here, it will convert it to an array here. That is wrong. So that's why I said, if you don't know about data manipulation, it is a little hard to do this one. The reason, this is not an object here. This is a string. So let me show you. I'm not going to take too much of the video, but the thing is, I will comment this code and I will just see the type of this one. It should be a string, right? Uh, you, you might expect this is an object, but this is a string. If you check out, as you can see, this is a string. This is not an object. It looks like an object, but this is not an object. So how you can change this one to an array while you are doing this code here? I'll show you. That is why how you can parse your data to JSON. And how you do this one? You will grab your data. You will use the JSON dot parse. And the parse is going to accept a string. And that string can be converted to an object. Now this will become an object. An object will change it to an array. If I save it for now, why I put the, why, why I need an array in the server? Because I want to do a for loop. And like I, I will run a for each and the for each will go for every product and it will read that one and it will assign it to line item here. Then we can check out. So for now, not talking about that. Let's check out again and see how it works. Yes, this is what we want. As you can see, my array will contain my array here. This is going to be the, my content will array an object of another type. And these are all the data we have. So I hope it has been informative. I hope you have learned about how you can manipulate data, object and JSON, which are very important. I could do it in like in one minute, doing everything and running everything at once. But when I console.log something, you will learn a lot like how data will look like and how you can debug it in the future. So I hope it has been informative. Thank you for watching and in the next video, we will I will show you how you can read data from the admin using the Firebase admin API and then you can put it here and out of that one, you can create your Stripe session. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next video.